Hi, I'm Stu from HiveMind Automation and welcome to The Hive. In this video, I'll be taking a look at this Arlec Grid Connect Smart Switch. We'll look at the build quality, we'll take a look at the two-year app integration and some of the features available using the two-year smart app. And we'll of course also check it out in Home Assistant. So while I roll the intro, take a moment to subscribe Hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week and let's get started. So I picked up this Arlec Grid Connect Smart Plug from Bunnings for $17.50 just the other day. And I also picked up this Arlec Grid Connect Smart Plug with energy monitoring for $21.56. So we're going to set one of them up and see how these units stack up in the Smart Plug category. Now, if you've watched my previous video about the Arlec Grid Connect Smart 4-Way Power Board, you'll know that these are going to be connected using the To Your Smart app, though you can install and use the Grid Connect app, which offers essentially the same functionality. So we will take uh, this one out of the box. I'll go for the energy monitoring one and we will take a look at the unit. Now inside the box, we've obviously got the unit itself. And we have a starter guide for getting it set up and just some packing material. Setting all of the other bits and pieces aside, we'll take a look at the unit itself and the build quality feels pretty good. Um, it does feel like it's a cheaper plastic than uh, in some of the other smart switches that I've reviewed. Um, we have the external button up here um, and that feels a bit clickier. Hard to describe what I mean, but it feels a little bit cheaper than um, some of the other smart plugs that I've tested as well, uh, but it's fine. I mean, for $17.50 uh, for the standard one and $21.56 for the energy metering one, and I don't see anything majorly wrong with it. It's a fairly standard design for a smart switch. It's uh, similar, as I said, with the IKEA Trad Free to uh, something like a uh, wireless door chime for a wireless doorbell, uh, or even um, you might see double adapter um, with two outlet ports that looks very, very similar to this. I believe the uh, button here also lights up behind it. And nicely, I note that the energy monitor unit has uh, some markings on the front here to help me keep track so that I don't mix them up in the boxes later on. And that's about it for the unit itself. Now I'll plug uh, just this one in uh, over on my set wall here. And the reason I'm only plugging the one in is because it is so wide that there is absolutely no way that I would be able to plug the second one in next to it. Uh, yeah, so uh, the width of these units is a little bit of a problem uh, in that it may block you from plugging in other things next to it. Now, if I take this power board and plug it in, it does allow us to plug into the wall beside it, um, and that is partly because uh, of this tapered design down the side here. Now we'll also see the second problem with this design is that the unit extends up from the plug, meaning that uh, it does block the switch. Now by virtue of there being quite a lot of extra space at the back of the unit, it doesn't block the switch to the point where you can't get a finger behind there to turn the unit on which we've just done. Now this is unlikely to be a problem if you're using this smart switch on either an unswitched power board or if you turn the switch on before plugging it in. So now that it's turned on, plugged in and turned on, I will also plug in my lamp here and we can see that the load is also on uh, and I'll grab my lamp over here. 
uh, and we'll just tap the button there and turn that off. Great, so that is working as we would expect. And so we'll head over to the iPhone and set up the To Your Smart app. So I'll open up To Your Smart and uh, we will tap on the plus button in the top right hand corner and I'm going to select Socket Wi-Fi. And we'll confirm our Wi-Fi details and I'll hit next. And it's telling me to power on the device after it's been powered off for 10 seconds. I'll hit next on that. It's going to tell me to press and hold the reset button for five seconds until the indicator blinks. So I will do that now. Okay, and so now our indicator is blinking and we'll hit next. And it's blinking three times per second. I'll confirm that it is blinking rapidly and hit next. And now we're adding the device. Okay, and it's just turned the relay off and then on again, which I'm assuming means that it is doing its thing with setup. Okay, so it's found the device. I'm going to just quickly change the name and we'll call this Arlec with energy meter and we'll save that and we'll put it in the dining room and we'll tap done. Okay, so that is now connected. So we've got a master switch to turn the load off and on and that's working. Uh, and then there's the off and on here. Now that master switch, we saw that used with the four port power strip uh, and that's where that comes into play. We can also see today's total kilowatt hours. We've got the voltage at the socket currently at 247.4 volts. We also have our current, which is at 0 0.03 amps and we're drawing 4.2 watts from this unit. If we tap history next to today's total kilowatt hours, it shows us a graph representation of our usage over the period. Uh, and we back out here uh, next to the on and off switch here. We've got this clock. If I tap there, we can either do a schedule or a countdown timer. So if I were to set that to one minute and hit save uh, in one minute, that is going to turn the switch off. And lastly, if I look at the hamburger menu over to the right of the name of the unit, we tap here, we can see all the details for the unit itself, things like turning on an offline notification, sharing the device with other members of the family, or adding it to a group or adding it to our home screen. So that is pretty much it for the To Your Smart app. Uh, there's not really a whole lot to the To Your Smart app as we've seen in the past. Uh, so let's take a look now at Home Assistant. So to get this unit set up in Home Assistant, because again, we are using To Your Smart, we're going to click on the configuration menu down the left hand side and we'll go to integrations. And we've already got To Your Smart set up in this instance of Home Assistant. And we've got six devices and six entities. If I hit the three dot stack here, also known as the kebab menu, uh, and we hit reload, this should update to, uh, we'll hit OK. This should have updated to six, seven devices and seven entities, but it doesn't appear to have done that. I'm going to click on the entities here and we'll see whether or not we can see this Arlec Grid Connect switch. And I'm not seeing it in here. So we'll go back to our overview and we will scroll down to switches and we do see the Arlec with energy meter PC399HA in there. I'm not sure why it's not showing up in the entities list but that's okay. It is showing up here in our Arlec within in our switches section. And I can t switch it on and switch it off. Now there is a little bit of a lag between uh, switching it on and switching it off and the actual uh, smart switch activating. Um, we've seen that before and this is one of the things that I will always uh, complain about when it comes to any cloud connected smart device.
If I click on the icon next to it, we see that we've got some information in here about when it was off, when it was on, etc. And we've got the switch. And if I click on the cog up here in the top right hand corner, and I want to take a look at the related section here, and it's not really showing me very much at all. Now, also note that I can't actually see any information about the energy metering from this Arlec Grid Connect smart socket in Home Assistant. And this is again showing us the limitations of the two year integration. So that is the Arlec Grid Connect smart plugs with and without energy monitoring. Now, it's probably worth mentioning that at least as far as I can tell, the Arlec Grid Connect devices are only available in this AU style form factor, meaning it's going to work for you in Australia, New Zealand and anywhere else with this style three prong power outlet. You could theoretically use an adapter to change the inputs and outputs, but there's a good chance that this isn't going to operate properly on a 110 volt electrical system. But the price of these units is really competitive and without the need for a bridge to connect it to your wireless network, it actually makes the unit somewhat compelling. Once again though, I have to note my disdain for smart devices that are tied to cloud services. While the two-year platform has been very instrumental in making so many cheap smart devices widely available to the masses, without a direct local API into the device, the added latency is an annoyance at best and the risk of losing control of your devices in the event of an internet disconnection is a bit of a problem for me. And that's not to mention the security implications of someone other than yourself holding all of the security keys to those servers. The two-year integration with Home Assistant can be hit and miss as well, as we've seen, where we can't access the energy monitoring data directly from the unit. And this is true of many of the two-year integrations that we've had a look at in the past, whether that be with lights or smart switches or other devices. Without that data being passed through to Home Assistant, it means that we may be tied into the two-year app. Now, in a future video, I will explore flashing these units with Tasmoda to take back local control of the devices and remove them from the clutches of the cloud. Both of these units already have templates available in the Blackadder repository, so all I need to do is to get Tasmoda onto them, but that's going to involve pulling the units apart to get to the ESP modules inside. I will be testing out two-year convert off camera on this unit uh, and if I do need to pull them apart I'll be sure to film it to show you how it's done. So if you can get past the cloud integration and you're looking for a relatively cheap smart switch or you're willing to do some hacking to install custom firmware then I think these units will definitely suit your needs. So do you agree with me about these Arlec Grid Connect smart plugs? Drop a comment down below to keep the conversation going. That is all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your home automation journey. Be sure to comment down below with home automation ideas that you would like to see me cover in a future video. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up down below. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so now. While you're at it, I'd recommend hitting the bell notification icon so that you get alerts whenever I release new videos each week. Lastly, if you are enjoying what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Contributions through that buy me a coffee link get put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.